Hello, hello, hello. Unfortunately, the whole cross-streaming thing wasn't to be. Looks like I need to set up some additional settings on uh, on the old Twitch. It might have been a good few years since I logged in to Twitch. So, uh, how are we all doing? I managed to get a working PTU server. First time, first time. See, there's definitely something to be said, I think, for not playing, not, not subjecting yourself to the PTU on the very first days. Working, look, that lift almost, almost came in first time. Oh, don't go out into the black hole of ArtCorp. Wait for the server to load in. Oh yeah, lions. You gotta, you gotta do the trick, mate. You've gotta, gotta just rename one of your files to PTU. Saves an awful lot of downloading on crappy internet. Yeah, elevator timings are decidedly off. So as you can see, I've got my red arrow armor on, and that's because today I'm gonna be red shirt Steve, not lab guns. Red for red shirt Steve, orange for lab guns. How are you guys all doing? How you doing, Vault Kraken? Good to see you, mate. Orange is definitely for the win, but I can't. I, I, I've got an, I've got it set up so it reminds me what account I'm playing on. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, oh! I'm back in the train. I'm back in the train. Gotta love the PTU. I thought I thought things were going too well, if I'm completely honest there. And I thought that was just Chris coming to bite. So yeah, it's not actually my birthday. My birthday was yesterday. But uh I was too busy. I was too busy getting spoiled to be absolutely honest. I went to a spa because I am comfortable in my masculinity. Had a nice dinner, had a nice lunch. And then spent three and a bit hours watching Avatar 2. Which I have to say was time well spent. Christmas tree doesn't have orange lights. I, I did totally miss a trick there, didn't I, Sly? I think some of them are orange. They might be, yeah. Uh, Maybe just get taken away by the blue. <laughs> red suit. No, the red shirt and red suit is for red shirt Steve, which is my main alt account. So, uh, so yeah, I thought I couldn't just constantly buy orange arrow sets. I had to mix it up. Although I much prefer this red, this like the I think it's the black cherry to the uh, the red alert ones. Red alert are cool, but but I feel that the um, I feel they already had a really good red arrow, so they didn't really need to do that in my opinion. Hmm. Any changes to ballistics or ammo in 3.18? I know there are changes to ballistics. Um, it's going to be basically averting a lot more of the shields than it once did. All right, watch out for the guys in white noob suits. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I, I have spent a bit of time in the PTU. I, I've been testing some salvage. I was trying to put a, try to put a video together for salvage, but... To be honest, I had my, had my mum and dad come up and see us. Um, and then I was doing birthday things with Ali yesterday. And, you know, sometimes you've got to be like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big, 
it's a big release for the game and everything, but you know, it's it's a game. <laughs> uh, it got, can't can't be just like uh, turning down your mum and dad's quarterly visit in favour of uh, in favour of playing games. <laughs> But I have to say, I didn't realise it, but I love the Drake Vulture. Spent a decent bit of time getting to grips with some of the salvage mechanics, and yeah, it, this is this is the surprise of the patch. I thought I thought I would like the Drake Vulture, but I absolutely love it. Such a cool ship. Um. And I'm not I'm not sure if all these weird HUD things are intentional or PTU. So But yeah, thank you very much for the birthday wishes, guys. I won't um I won't completely out myself with exactly how old I am, but all I can say is I spent the entire year thinking that I was a year older than I was. So when people asked me I told them a certain number. And it was actually the number that I turned yesterday. So um so I just got back a year of my life. I'm pretty pretty pleased. I can basically just put my foot up feet up this year. I achieved everything I wanted to achieve by this age already. Or by next year's birthday already. It's nice as well. There's um, it's quite a few different starting locations this time. Yeah, Orison being a viable starting location. I think I muscle memory to area eighteen, but but you could definitely go for Orison this time around. That flight ceiling is um quite a big change, which is really nice because uh. I, I haven't had a go. I might have a go later in this stream. I uh, haven't had a go at the new PTV racetrack. Uh, so yeah, yeah. A couple of people, a couple of people mentioned the um, the similarity to the Venture and Eve, and uh, I had to go and look up what a Venture looked like. And yeah, yeah, you don't really have to. It looks like a Drake Vulture. <laughs> so yeah. It's um, very definitely, uh, I think we can safely say CIG took some inspiration, if we put it like that. Uh, I did pledge for a vulture, but I did it. I did it with some store credit. It's probably not something, not something I'll keep long, long term, if that makes sense. Um, I, did, I definitely wanted one for, for this patch. Uh, and conveniently, if you do get into the BTU at the moment, um, everybody has a vulture and and a reclaimer. So um, <laughs> that's like, I think you mean every other sci-fi has time travelled to take inspiration from SE. Well, we can't disprove that, can we? That could be a working theory. Oh well, thank you very much, nine five zero. Thank you very much. I will um, I'll put that towards some birthday beverages, which won't just be tiny coke. Um, I need the tiny coke to perk perk myself up. That said, I did buy a really nice bottle of rum the other day at a Christmas market. So um. So maybe I'll have a tiny Coke with a tiny rum. Just like drinking things in receptacles which make my hands look giant. That is a, that is a good question, Benny. How rough is the PTU? Um, oh, and thank you very much as well for Nomino Ya. I hope I didn't make a complete hash of your name there, my mate. But yeah, Benny. Um, so this, right now, I mean, like, 
I'm going to curse myself. Uh, but right now, this has been the smoothest sailing PTU experience I've had so far. Earlier in the week when I was playing, it was a case of like... I mean, it was horrendous, to be honest. Just try and get a slot in the PTU was a case of repeatedly clicking and pressing enter to dismiss the server full type thing. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's been a bit rougher than, than PTUs gone by. Uh, but that said, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like... Uh, that was that was kind of why I just decided to knock on the head for um, for try and make a video right at the start of the week. I was just like, you know, I just don't have the time, don't have the time to like sit and repeatedly try to get in and then just get thirty k down and all that sort of stuff. And you know, it, it's clearly right round the corner. It's all getting a lot more stable every day, but. If you're, uh, Ooh. there we go, caught up. Yeah, it, the PTU is not not the best gaming experience at the end of the day. Um, it's really it's it's about testing, and hats off to everybody and anyone who has filed a um, you know, filed a bug report with CIG and all that sort of stuff. It's it's kind of easy to forget that um. PTUs are not for us to get in and just try out the new patch ahead of time and they're not for streamers and YouTubers to make videos about the new um the new content of the new patch. It's it's not about that. It's about testing out the servers, making sure they handle, making sure it's a better gaming experience for when it goes live so that Switching to a new patch is not a mega disaster. Um, on wave two, I would, I mean, like I'd hazard a guess, and this is already a ton more stable than it was a couple of days ago when I last tried. I, I last tried logging in on the twenty first. I just had yesterday completely off. This is this is already head and shoulders above what it was like on uh, on those days and i would imagine that cig probably want probably just want it out to to full public ahead of christmas um so that they can take a bit of time off but you know obviously that is time is uh time is against them on that a little bit uh, but clearly they've opened up more servers because I haven't had any any problems logging in today at all. To take a quick look around the Vulture though, just for anybody who, uh, who's managed to live under a rock and not see it yet. So, uh... yeah, I uh, I haven't managed, that's the one part, maybe we'll get it today, that's the one part I haven't managed to do, I haven't managed to actually uh, sell any salvage. I managed to salvage a full hold, uh, but I haven't managed to sell it. So yeah, so you, back from the cab, you've got this um, living area, and then you go down this small set of stairs, and this is where your cargo lives, and you've got this machine here, which compresses the the RMC. So yeah, it's um, it's really cool, and it's also sort of arguably like kind of it's almost one of our first crafting stations. For SC, so you know, with sort of interactable, interactable features. As we as we might come on to see, I and this might be a bit of a controversial opinion, um, but I think the Vulture is a two-person ship. So basically, don't worry and go and FOMO buy one if you don't have one, because uh, I really think, in order to get anywhere near sort of an optimum operation. Uh, this is this is going to be a two-person ship. One thing I wondered about was whether you have somebody driving something like a uh, Cutty Black or a Freelancer to offload boxes, um, and they could, you know, if you were particularly sort of active, if you'd maybe uh, switch 
So you find some salvage. The guy EVAs over to the back of the cut, uh, back of the vulture. Uh, did they change the background of the panel? Uh, was that the panel on the vulture? I'll be honest, I I didn't see it before, so I'm not sure. I'm just gonna set my spawn though, so that we uh, we can hopefully avoid going back to Art Corp. Yeah, there's definitely been some uh, some problems with MFDs, uh, so. Sort of uh, one one server that I was on, just the MFDs went completely blank. All right, let's just go back to Hangar One. One thing which I I would strongly caution on um, is reading too much into how easy it is to find salvage. We'll we'll sort of come up on that, I think. I think salvage settings, like the, the amount of um, derelicts out there, I think they're just turned up to 11. Just to, just to facilitate testing. So, um, yeah, perhaps uh, Miss Collet, that could be a really interesting ship. And actually something we might do tonight, because I'm just going to go potter around a bit. Feel free to chuck any questions my way. Um, this is very much just meant as a bit of a bit of a hangout. Go definitely do a bit of salvage first, but we might potter around, see um, see about some some things like look at what some of the new ships are. So sort of maybe in the um, in the ship shops, see what type of prices they are. Oh, thank you very much, Garrett. Happy holidays to Frontier Consolidated. Indeed, I. I like to get all of my celebration out in one one fell swoop in December. So we've got the org org birthday on the twenty fourth. Got my birthday a couple of days before, and then you know, big man's birthday. So yeah, uh, has has been noticeable? Uh, like no, <laughs> well, not noticeable to me, but like I'm a. Uh, you know me, Sniggy. I am not the most technical of fiends. I'm sorry, this this is what I mean by don't read too much into how profitable salvage is. Because like this is so these these are the new icons, right? And just just take a look at that. Like salvage, 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 there's some more salvage. I I get a feeling get a feeling that uh CIG want us to test salvage and therefore have made it ridiculously easy to find so um it's uh i don't think we can there's no point putting out a salvage guide right now like and i and i think i think what i might i'm probably gonna put together a video which is like you know the first thoughts summarize some of the things i've worked out about it so far but the reason you, you can't do a guide, like you can't do salvage guide 318 is because if if this is this this cannot be intentionally how easy stuff of this value is meant to find, meant to be defined. So <laughs> No worries, Buzz. I will I will remember. I remember that's the uh, that's the real name. Don't worry, mate, as well, like, you know, whatever your name is, other children would have bullied you. Like, they did me. <laughs> that's, that's just what kids are like, right? Uh. Yeah, I'm really happy. I was, I was due on Christmas Day, but for the first and only time in my life, I arrived somewhere early. Not to say I'm always late. I'm usually I'm usually quite punctual. That's what I go for. We'll also warn you all at this point. This is this is a little bit of an experiment for me. Um, so I have Krug to look after in the background. 
Uh, so he's here. I might have to at various points dash off to deal with a relatively angry French bulldog. He's had a he's had a big day though. He, uh, my wife sorted out him him going over to uh, we got a dog walker who comes in and takes him um, while I'm at work and he went to stay with him last night so. We can't quite work out. We think he's a bit... Um, we think he's incredibly tired out because he's been on two big walks today. But we also think maybe he's a little bit angry at us because we sent him away. I right, probably need to find a bit of... Uh... Looks like there's already a reclaimer on that wreck. How do you zoom? Hold down F, which is by default your interaction key, and then mouse wheel in and out. Gives you a zoom view. And if you combine that, you can combine that with your free look buttons, and then still use it if you want to zoom in on stuff off to your left and right. Back to uh, back to Sniggy's question on Pez though. What has been it has been noticeable is the cargo refactor. The cargo refactor is really cool. A um, little bit janky around the edges, but it is great. Like, I think I said that in the last video I put out. I think, I think too much has been made recently of the, the whole, like, ah, cargo can get moved, pirates. And too little has been made of how important the feature is for like literally everything else. Like the importance of the importance of the cargo refactor to piracy is yeah, fair enough. It is there. But also the importance to like industrial play is massive. Like being able to it's what's gonna eventually let us like um take cargo from one person's ship and put it on another. Uh, neat little trick for would-be salvages, because these bits could be quite tedious. Uh, just give yourself a... You can get a lock on these wrecks, and then if you switch to target status on your MFD, you'll be able to get the uh, the readout up there of your distance to it. Thank you very much, Scott. Yeah, ship tractor beams. Ship tractor beams will be incredibly important. I really hope that they they are looking forward to uh they're they're in a patch not too distant in the future. Is there a reclaimer next to every piece of salvage I find? I wonder if these are even manned. We'll slow down and take a look here. See if it's actually doing anything. I get the feeling these are people who've just literally driven their reclaimer out to to a wreck. What I'm what I am most most excited about for physical cargo is is the it could mean perpetual operations. Like currently, you know, with any form of cargo op, you have to uh, you have to constantly sort of go back and forth, right? You know, or uh, any form of industrial op, really. Like get your stuff, and then you know you filled your cargo hold, so you must go back. Whereas the fact that you could chuck boxes off one ship onto another ship. You know, cargo refact is like essential, isn't it, for refining? Yeah, so um you need to be able to transfer the ore onto the refinery ship, the boxes off the refinery ship onto a cargo ship. Oh thank you very much, Silas. That is much appreciated, my man. Looks like I'm gonna have a uh 
have a pretty good night out to myself. So right, so let's take a look at the salvage head. So just press M. Uh, it's the same as the mining mode. Um, and I think what we'll do, we'll look a little bit away from this to start with, just so we can get a good look around the... Uh, yeah, look around the HUD. So we'll start up at the top. So we've got our cargo. And this is... Um, how much towards a one SCU box you are, this bar fills up. When we target a ship, like a viable piece of salvage, like this 890 jump, the vehicle hull bit here uh, will give us an indication of how much salvage is left within it. Uh, in the middle just gives your uh, your extraction rate, we'll see that, that in action in a second. So these over on the left and right are mimics because the uh, the vulture has the two salvage lasers. And what you've got here are basically the three things to balance within the salvage game loop. So you've got diameter, speed, and efficiency. Um, and it's basically just like mining in terms of like how you've got like laser power and then the uh, the buffs and debuffs that it applies. So everything's going to be a trade-off. And what you've got by default on the Vulture are the Cinch and the Abraid. I've definitely seen a couple of others because there are a couple of others as standard on the Reclaimers. Uh, but if we, if we move in, we've got these two bits down at the bottom and they're basically seeing saying how much salvage is like in the area um that my lasers are currently pointed at so if you just click left once to turn on the things then you can see as they burn away the whole these go back down to zero uh so part of it is just keeping it moving nicely but then as i get onto a good bit of salvage you'll see the extraction rate, so that sort of ticked up to 0 0.0003 at the highest. And that's using the Cinch Scraper module. Um, but the one I'm currently preferring is the Abrade. Now, this is nowhere near... Let's just check. Yeah, so this is not as efficient, so you're giving up efficiency which I take it to mean how much, you know, how much of an area do you turn into RMC? Um, but as you can see, there's no, we're not short on salvage at the moment. So to my mind, getting up to that, that's sort of gone up to 0 0.012, 0 0.015 I've managed to hit there. And so for me right now, it's it's actually more just about the efficiency of the scrape. I managed to get up to 0 0.002 at one point at that point. So there you'll see my cargo here is starting to fill a lot more quickly. Uh, for ease of use, you can also gimbal um, these mining heads. And therefore you can just, you can grab your vape and you can... I, I find this loop incredibly therapeutic so far. That's all I can say. Now, once you get to a full box, you get that orange message up at the top, filler station ejecting. So you just want to stop salvaging while you let that play out. And then what you can do, because we'll see in a bit, that has just pushed automatically one box out into the hold of my ship. Before we uh, worry about moving down to go and look at it, we can get another one uh, filled up so, so that we sort of minimise how much we're out of our seat. Now, another cool thing which I found we can do is changing the width between the lasers. So by default, they are running right to left. And if I hold Alt and scroll my mouse wheel, 
you can see down in the bottom mid of my screen that those arrows which are spreading out. So if I just pick a fresh patch of hole by scrolling the mouse wheel, I can change the uh, change the distance of the lasers. I think what you got to do is really you you're trying to find a spot where you can be as efficient as possible, where you can basically get to the highest extraction rate you can. There is another key button that I need to remind myself on, which um, determines sort of you can, rather than spreading the angle horizontally, you can change it, you can offset them vertically as well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about, um, just on that comment about the boarding, the boarding mission, I'm not sure that like, mission ships are going to generate salvage i could be wrong yeah to be fair project that that would be quite a good thing wouldn't it particularly now they've implemented it for for the vultures heads uh this is coming in in 318 so that will be the next patch uh, to come out. Probably it will be in January that it goes to PU, though I would imagine at least January. Now, thankfully, I remembered my tractor beam. Uh, should have said this at the start. Remembering a tractor beam is absolutely essential. So that's the first box that was generated and pushed out. But once it's obstructed, it won't push a second one out. So you've got to just manually hit the eject there. And then, yeah, the, uh, the whole cargo refactor bit is working quite smoothly. So you just get the get an area and wherever you let it go, once you've got one of those blue things, it will just snap into the grid, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's, it's really smooth lines, really smooth. And... Yeah, this is the reason. So, you know, two RMC, every two RMC, I've got to hop out of the chair to go and stow it. So I personally think that this is something that we can look at, uh, look at pushing the efficiency up on by, by working as a group. It's going to be way more important. Let's try and get into the sun a little bit so we can see these lasers go. Right, so by default, that switched itself back to my uh, my braid ones. They were worried that I've lost completely my uh, my HUD again. There is still definitely jankiness about the PTE. However, like I, like I say, this is I I personally at least am finding this incredibly. Therapeutic. I can see myself uh, see myself enjoying enjoying hole stripping quite a bit. Yeah, that was that was what I was theorizing. Line, so you know, you could you could quite easily work as a two with somebody towing a uh, towing a cargo ship to offload the stuff, and then when you find a wreck like this, particularly if you're in a fairly safe area, you know, dead space, you can. Uh, you could hop out of the pilot seat of the uh, the cargo hauler, make your way over, and help by sort of stacking boxes just to speed up the uh, speed up the vulture. So yeah, I think this. Uh, I really I really like it because one one of the things I I obviously love like yeah you know, when we go out and do big mining operations. But I also really enjoyed those mining operations where it's just, you know, you end up with a few of you and you go out and you you make it nice and efficient with scouts and helping each other break the bigger rocks and all that sort of stuff. And so on the one hand, I'm really looking forward to big salvage ops. But I'm still, 
still quite excited for the potential of um of smaller ones. So, so they they will put this ship for sale in game, but I would not expect it to at the earliest three nineteen. Um is a bit of a personal bugbear for me. I don't really like the fact that new game loops like this are trapped behind a paywall. But it's, um, I think it just is what it is. But like I say, don't don't fall for the FOMO because sort of obviously what we're we're doing today is just purely the vulture, but. I think the vulture will work best in an operation type setting, um, and certainly the reclaimer will. Uh, so it's my little early Christmas present to myself. This uh, this IAE, I bought myself a reclaimer, uh, so I will I will be in the market for probably a five person crew at a time. So. Um, so yeah, don't don't be like ah, I need to go and buy this hundred and fifty dollar ship, whatever the vulture gets knocked up to, because I want to experience salvage gameplay. You know, there'll be plenty of opportunities too as part of a group. So I I would recommend just anyone who maybe if you aren't already like just find a find an org to join up with. By all means, come and say hello to us. We don't mind. Um, the the link to Discord. Hopefully, uh, oh well, I can I can probably pop it in there in a second. There will be a link to Discord in in the video description when I'm not having to just move my salvage out of the way. That's a good point. I will during this stream as long as Greg allows it to continue. Um, go and get the hand tool. <laughs> bringing plushies is optional but it will get you an instant warm welcome I'm sure Tack Panda is going to be so happy I reckon if he hasn't seen the boxing already he'll be pretty happy with it Um, you you won't be able to buy it with in-game cash when it first comes out in 3.18 it's you know it's just just the way these things these things go unless CIG have changed something um, changed something massively The the general rule was always um, one patch, uh, but CIG have they changed that up a little bit recently. Um, so so we'll we'll have to see what ships uh, what ships from three seventeen are in the in the ship shops. I'd imagine there's. There's some from that were released technically in 317, which will not be in the ship shops. I wouldn't expect to see the cutter or the Corsair. Um or the Pisces C eight R. Because they I think they were clearly earmarked for a um a three eighteen release themselves. It was just three eighteen was too slow for IAE, so However, I would be interested to see if things like the Scorpius, the uh, Miss Calais, the Centurion, if they've made it into the ship shops. Yeah, I think I do need to, I do need to do a few things um, to make the stream smoother. It's part of my it's part of my New Year plan to, uh, particularly with three eighteen coming in to uh to get more on the streaming um i've got some stuff which should mean that it's perfectly easy to oh sorry hello mr reclaimer 
uh, that should make make it really easy to uh, to stream cross platform to Twitch as well. But yeah, so if anybody would like to give me any tips for things I need to set up, like bot links, please be my guest. I've got some hopefully cool stuff planned for next year. Going to be doing a, um, a zero to hero. But I'm going to try and make it hard mode. So I'm going to start with a cutter, and then we're going to do loot only. Uh, so no buying, uh, no buying any gear, no rentals. Have to have to buy all my ships. Yeah, say it's okay to buy ships and buy um, like parts for them, that sort of stuff. I wouldn't say it's totally easy made. Also, go bring in a thing where if I die. I have to pay 100,000 credits to chat. So, you know, watch me. Might get a bit richer. We'll see how many people just come and stream snipe me to try and get me to, uh, to lose 100k. Hmm. No new ships in the ship shops. That is very unusual. After we got a full load of salvage, we can maybe have a look around for somewhere to sell it, see if we get lucky. But then maybe after that, we'll go and go and check out the ship shops, see if there's uh, see if there's anything new there. And yeah, we should definitely go over and check out the new PTV course. Do you need to just keep an eye on the time because it's uh, getting towards Krug's dinner, so I might need to run off and give the lad some food. Yeah, one thing I wish I'm try work out, and if anybody has the answer, is uh, when. Do you see sort of on the HUD how we're getting like some parts of this A90 are yellow, some parts of it are red? If anybody happens to know what that means, then please do let me know. Oh, you want me to do the zero to hero starting with a PTV? Oof. That's, um... How would you even start that? That's my question. Yeah, my headphones, my my headlights are on. It is just dark. Unfortunately, you get the wrong side of the uh, of the wreck, and you put it in between you and the sun. It can get pretty dark in there. There we go. Half full. This is why this is why this needs to get toned down before you know how easy it is to find salvage definitely needs to get toned down because i mean it's it's quite chunky in terms of the um the credits per hour Oh yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe the quality of the extraction rate, therefore the quality of the... Uh... Yeah, still getting up to sort of 0 0.12 at times on this. But yeah, maybe it's not as... Just not as good high quality as the uh, as the yellow bit, and I assume... Because uh, I did, did manage to shoot down a Gladius in my Vulture the other day, just a PvE one. And that had some green outlines to it. So yeah, that could that could definitely make sense, couldn't it? I 
Let's just adjust the beams a little bit closer together. I think I'm missing a bit in the middle each time. Knocks like a combat knife. I don't want to completely punish myself. I do, I do value my time a little bit. It's mostly just about having something, uh, something fun to do during a bit of the old streaming. Thank you very much, JT. Another year older, not any wiser. Just got to remember to stop extracting for that, that filler station to eject. Keep an eye on Krug as well. I need, I need Krug cam. Not so you guys can, not so he can become a streaming sensation, but so that I can keep an eye on what's going on behind me. Oh, I don't know if EU opened up a PTU server. I am on the US ones because I just sort of assumed that was uh, that was still the thing. But that might explain why I got straight in. So, because uh, that definitely hadn't happened at any point earlier this week. Not that I wish to curse myself, but you know, this is this is definitely like night and day compared to uh, compared to where it was a couple of days ago. It's one of the reasons as well not to get like you know, not to get too deep into the weeds of like, oh my god, the PTU is awful. It's just like. Yeah, just give it give it a few days. <laughs> Have some patience. We've waited for three eighteen for a year. I think we can um I think we can give it a few more days in the oven, you know. <laughs> no. Dogs are enough, Silas. Dogs are enough. Dogs and dogs and running an org. Quite enough right now. <laughs> Thankfully, Ali agrees with me as well. That's the best bit. Yeah, this is. Um... So I think salvage is probably what I'm going to be spending most of the next patch doing. I don't know about you guys, but this is this is just highly therapeutic for me. It's also like one of the few activities I've managed to find in Star Citizen where I can can comfortably uh, comfortably sit and chat. Nice. Yeah, I noticed there was another there was another PTU update to install just before uh, just before it started. So that's it. That's it as well. Sort of. Evocati testers, sort of if if any maybe here is an Evo tester, like hats off to you lot. No, not literally. I'm gonna keep my hat on my head for right now. But like the work that the Evo guys do and what they are willing to um to, you know put into testing, you know. Basically thank you very much from the rest of us. Because uh, cause those must be some horrible builds. But at the same time, sort of, there's only so much that the scale of of testing with the limited number of uh, avocados can accomplish. So, um, so then you throw it at a slightly larger group of people, then you throw it at an even larger group of people. Yeah, I think it's um I think just with the uh the reference there to Hard Space Shipbreaker, I think one of the things cuz that was that was a great game, the the bit of it that I played. But I think one of the things which is definitely worth remembering, sorry my uh sometimes I've found you have to just power down the vulture and power it back up when it starts doing weird stuff with your lasers. But yeah, one of the one of the things to definitely remember about um salvage in SC right now is that this is this is just baby steps in terms of salvage. 
This is just the, the whole stripping part. And then in the future, we're going to get sort of a lot more to it. So and you can kind of see it in like how they've set the, set the whole scraping up. So, you know, you'd have this whole scraping angle. Then you would, um, then after that, you'd maybe have the rest of the hole that you have to slice up. One thing which um, which I think could be really interesting that they could surely bring in sort of now is um, I'd love to see like some of these wrecks have like bits of cargo on them. You know, maybe sort of a few boxes just completely randomly generated. It's one of the things which was always really appealing to me about Salvage was the um, that whole idea of like, you know, exploring exploring these wrecks that you find out in the wilderness maybe there's maybe there's still people on board you know maybe some of them are like a trap maybe it's aliens <laughs> but yeah i think there's just like uh that could create like a really really engaging gameplay loop where you know you don't know what the outcomes could be but if you want to maximize your profits you can you can go right ahead and before you start the whole breaking down the ship, you can go and just see if there's anything anything valuable on board. It'd be really interesting once we get things like cutting components out of ships. Um, I'd imagine that's that's gonna be where there's a decent chunk of extra money to be made salvaging. But yeah, right now it's kinda of like reverse painting. It's quite cathartic would be the term I would use to describe the current state of salvage. So currently, yeah, currently, I mean, I'll be honest, there could be salvage on planets. Um, it's just that it's one of those things where, like, you know, if you walk if you fly out like a few kilometers from a station you start stubbing your toe on it like it's um and it's part of the reason i would say there's there's zero point to putting together a how to salvage guide right now because the one of the biggest parts of any sort of industrial game loop is going to be finding the stuff and clearly cig have just littered all of space with it so it's ridiculously easy to find so that because it's the uh the focus of the testing at the moment the salvage loop so they just want people and i think it accomplishes sort of a bunch of different testing goals where you've got salvaging the actual like hole stripping mechanics um but you've also then got lots of people testing the cargo refactor because of because of this <laughs> keep those boxes moving Yeah, I heard it's about seven seven thousand five hundred per SEU. Is that right for RMC? Just out of interest, where did you sell it, Phenomena? Because I I did when I was playing the other night. I flew around quite a different load of different locations, but I think one of the things which had happened to me at that point was the um, all the MFDs everywhere had gone blank, not just in my ship. we're nearly there we nearly got a full 12 how long has that taken me i mean we're we're nearly an hour into the stream but a big chunk of that was like getting off art corp itself and um and i stopped off at arc l1 didn't i to uh to go and set my spawn before heading back out All right, got paid higher in Louisville. So you can just sell it at the TDD, can you? Or is it admin terminals? Oh, 
that's cool. So yeah, maybe we'll head over to Lawville when we've got a full, full 12, because I wouldn't mind stopping and taking a look in New Deal. See if we've got some more ships. So yeah, New Deal New Deal does MISC, right? Um which are the big ones we need to check? We need to check MISC, RSI, and Anvil for the Centurion. So Anvil will be at uh area 18. Right then, yeah, that's uh that's a good question. Um, so if you if you move salvage to your own cargo ship, can your friend sell it? So part of CIG's answer in the AMA was that even if you give give like boxes to a friend, so you actually want them to take your stuff, it will still be treated as stolen stolen goods. Um, what I am keen to try out. Sort of, I'll, I'll probably get back on with um, put a bit of a group together on the Discord to go and do some some multi crew testing tomorrow if I um, if I manage to get all my jobs done ahead of Christmas. Because what I really want to test out is if I if I own both of the ships. So like, let's just pick on Lion's Mane here. So if Lion's Mane is flying my Cutlass Black. And I'm flying my Vulture and we move the boxes into another ship I own. Is it still... Um, does it still count as legal, basically? Yeah, so, so anybody will be able to take cargo and sell it at NQA terminals. But that means that if you, if you handed your salvage off to your friend uh, purposely, they would have to sell it as if it was stolen goods. Um, and at that point, they get less money for it. So that's not going to be particularly useful um, for you if you, since there's no reason, no reason that you should should be getting stolen prices for it. Oh dear. Hopefully, this isn't the point that I kill myself with the box. There we go. A very neatly stacked twelve SCU. I know I could get a bit more, but let's uh, let's just go ahead and we'll we'll head down to a TDD and go and uh, go and see if we can sell this, and that'll give me a little bit of quantum travel to uh, quickly just cast an eye over Krug, make sure he's not doing anything I wouldn't, and then when we're there, we can also. Uh, can also take a look at the the prices see if there's any see if there's any new goodies in new deal a bit worried though because all of my hud has gone which was um a problem i had the other day as well yeah nomad could be a good shout as well It'll be it'll just be interesting to see like how much of a difference does um how much of a difference does external cargo make in the grand scheme. Well not sure what was going on my screen just there. PTU <laughs> PTU disclaimers should be upheld. I would uh, I would call attention to this bit of text at the bottom of the screen, uh, which is slightly clipped off by my overlay, but it does stress test version, an early test build, and not indicative of gameplay slash content on the official live servers. So um, yeah, I think it's I think it's quite important to remember that you know what you're looking at should be a lot better by the time it hits live. Including, hopefully, we'll have working HUDs. Which don't leave you guessing 
to see whether or not you uh <laughs> you're actually quantum traveling towards something or if your jump drive spooled or not Yeah, yeah, that that overlay message will also also be gone. So, <laughs> right, got to hope. I'm just got to kind of guess how long this drive takes to spool. There we go. We have managed to hit quantum. Oh, it's just a beautiful ship. It is just a beautiful ship in yellow. I'm uh, I'm quite taken with the vulture. I hate to admit it, but I never loved the uh, I never loved the Misk Prospector. I liked it; it was a good workhorse. But it was just like, as a ship, just rule of cool. It just didn't do it for me. So, um, so yeah, I'm I'd sort of assumed that it was just because I like bigger ships generally, but. Uh, but no, no, I think it's I think it's because I like Drake. <laughs> yeah, the prospector the prospector to me is just a little bit too clean. It's not particularly not particularly rugged. And I loved the sort of all the imagery around it was this like rugged little mining ship on the on the frontier. It was a little bit, little bit too nice for that. Whereas I think Drake's styling has um, has definitely, uh, definitely got that feel, that aesthetic. And yeah, the the side entry, like climbing climbing up it like it's a big old JCB, is um, is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Is that the the prospector? I mean, the prospector. I still think like there are there are a bunch of older ships, right? Which I think could have have some more life breathed into them. Yeah, I mean, we've had the Pisces for a long time, but then then they showed what they could do with the Pisces variant with the C8R, and like, yeah, you know, that's really interesting. Like that they can can take an old older ship like that and then come up with a new variant so yeah there's no there's no reason that the prospector can couldn't get some of the same treatments i don't know if you still have gravity when you're out on the wings i i think the gravity starts from there is like this see where the color changes where you sort of step onto the metal off the yellow I think that's where the gravity starts. Um, I'm not going to test it now in quantum, if that's all right with you guys. I do indeed have a face now. I've always had a face, but I didn't always have a camera. So. <laughs> but thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Still waiting for the hammer cad on the Pisces. I think you'll be waiting a while. That's one of the only downsides the Pisces has, no bed. So it needs to uh needs to have have some downsides. Curious if the unannounced ship in tracker is the new RSI medium minor. So it's an RSI large minor, I believe, which has got me excited. So you should therefore have the whole series. You know, the Miss Prospector is the small, the Mole is the medium. This ship from RSI is going to be the large, and then you got the Orion as the capital. So that's the mining loop with four ships um, hitting all of the different size points, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it it could get some work to concept it. I wouldn't be surprised if we if we saw a concept sale for it in the not too distant future. They could always save it as one of the ones for next CitizenCon or next IAE. Um,
but yeah, it, it should be a really cool ship when it comes. I'm I'm interested to see what type of mining they go down with it. Um, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if it was a mini Orion, um, so that they had something smaller than the Orion to work on the different type of mining that the Orion does. Sort of something more focused around like crunching rocks up than than the standard lasering that we've had until this point. Um, because it just, you know, I'm obviously a I'm a keen industrial player, keen miner. But I just think if you put the Orion into game like just this second, it it could be quite um could be quite game breaking. So sort of just in terms of like the sheer economy of an Orion. Like you're talk you're talking about something which can it's meant to just chew its way through asteroid fields. So so I, I sort of think with the current setup that we have, if we if we chucked an Orion in and like a crew of us could just take one or two of them out to the Halo. How long is it before we just bought every ship in game and have no real um incentive to play? <laughs> uh so I think CIG will be keen to avoid that uh eventuality. So Hey George Dring. Sorry mate. There is no uh there is no being late or early. This is meant meant as a very just chilled out evening. I've had far too much to do in the last like it's been very fun. Seen seen a lot of people. Had a really great day yesterday. Um but I'm really enjoying just sitting in my chair playing video games, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Good old Lawville. Oh, oh dear. Right, don't start trying to roll your ship immediately as you exit Quantum. And hopefully that red chevron behind me is just a... Uh, just somebody who's abandoned and reclaimed their ship. So. Yeah, I think... Um, I think there could be it could be quite interesting if maybe like things like a hammock was something that you could add to your ship at a later date. I need to go and check out I've seen a few people talking about crafting and I'm obviously incredibly excited as a former survival nut. Uh survival game nut, not survival real life nut. Don't let the uh don't let the shirt fool you in anything to do with crafting. Um, but yeah, having just gone off on a huge tangent, I'll try and get back to my original point. Um, so given, given the Orion probably can't get put into the game immediately, I just wonder whether, you know, because you've got, you've got things like the Expanse. So the Expanse is your refinery ship, but it lets you nail refining mechanics, lets you put the game loop in, and, you know, that's one of the game loops for the Orion. Uh, obviously, sort of mining with lasers is already in. That's another of the game loops for the Orion. But then, you know, could you bring in a smaller than the Orion ship, which features the sort of like the more mining that the Orion has so that you could get all the features locked in and you could get all the gameplay and then you just scale it up for the Orion to release when when you're ready for that sort of size of ship. Haha <laughs> Lions, it is it is a tiny can. But actually it's just to offset my massive hands. I get teased quite a lot by my by my IRL mates for having massive hands. So I find that if I just hold tiny things, then it's like makes it more confusing. <laughs> but yeah, I want I wonder. I think I think the RSI one, it could it could be having some concept work done on it. Oh uh, yeah, the Orion does have tractor beams. Yeah, so that's another another of these 
things that needs to get a little bit fleshed out for it. But yeah, I, I think, you know, they usually they usually add a few releases for uh for Ram Citizen Con and IAE. Like this IAE we had what three? Two straight to flyable and um and the Galaxy is the uh the third as a concept sale. Just checking, did I put my landing gear down? Doesn't look very landing gear-y, does it? I definitely pressed the key. I promise. Just another loud guns landing. Yeah, don't... Don't get caught in the FOMO. Like... One... My, my one sort of issue with... CIG's marketing is um, is the whole FOMO inducement, and there are always opportunities to buy ships. There aren't any ships which go away, which never come back. Like uh, they they will always be for sale at least once a year, um, and in many cases, a lot more than that. You've also got the Invictus sale, which is all things military. But for all things military, they uh, they get away with an awful lot of stuff which isn't really military. You know, if it's remotely military, then it can... Well, this is not a good sign, I have to say. Just in case you think that you're seeing something, you're not seeing something that I'm seeing on my screen. Nope, no, these uh, these <laughs> HUDs are all completely blank. This is just seemingly a PTU issue. Um, I'm betting that that's going to extend to the ASOP terminals as well. Yep, not a good sign. Uh, we we do have one ship which has no weapons. The hover quad has no weapons. <laughs> so, so at least there's one. Um. Well, this is promising. Okay, so at least New Deal's HUD is working. And let's take a look. Let's just see. So I think it was MISC. We wanted to see if the Hull A has made it in at all. No, no sign of the Hull A yet. And what were the other ones we needed? So there's Anvil, which should have the Centurion, but that's not here. Um, and it was the RSI Scorpius, wasn't it? That also released in three, three seventeen. Now this doesn't mean that they won't, uh, won't be coming in. It just, you know, this is something which happens during PTUs. They don't necessarily release all of the features at once. I think it's interesting as well that for PTUs, they've stopped giving out the 15 million credits. I think part of that is, is just because people would obviously use PTUs as just a way to, uh, way to trial new ships. Which, you know, not a bad thing, but just it might not be. Um, it doesn't really help much with the testing focus, you know. CIG have already had an entire patch to test the Scorpius. Uh, they fixed a number of things on it. So they don't need a bunch of people testing for 318 by flying around in a Scorpius that they just bought. Let's just see, because the it was interesting that the New Deal terminal was working even if the uh the other ones, like the ASOP and stuff, weren't. Um, so I would just like to try 
the TDD. See if I can actually sell my first boxes of salvage. Plus, it's an excuse to take a train ride. Which are just good opportunities to have a smoke and a drink. People complain about the trains, but I would miss them if they were gone. There's nothing quite like trying to work out whether or not you've got time to like run out of the room and go and turn off the tumble dryer or something like that before you get to the uh, <laughs> central business district. I've misjudged it a couple of times and had to uh, had to ride the train back to Lawville, back to Tisa, and then back again. High quality gameplay. I believe the Reclaimer is working. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really had a go with it yet, to be honest. One of the, one of the things I found, I, th I thought... Sort of, cause, yeah, like I say, I, this is my first time logging in uh, today. I didn't log in yesterday. Um, so I, I was trying a bit on the 20th and the 21st. Uh, it was so tricky to get in just as a solo player uh, that I didn't want to think about sort of try to put a crew together to, to get a party in because I think it would have just been uh, masochistic yeah I'm really looking forward to doing some testing with the uh, yeah with the reclaimer I think the reclaimer is probably gonna be probably gonna be a four to five person ship. It's absolutely not solo, not solo friendly. I could make I could make solo work with the mole. You know, you can just hop seats and stuff. Um, but the reclaimer, no, no, no. Right, it's just. There's far too much of that ship to get around um, to, to make sense to solo at all. Right, not promising. Not promising at all. Okay, well we might have to do a relog. See if I can get onto a new EU server. I'm hoping that as I have landed my vulture, that it will be uh, they will be there when we get back. If not, then maybe we'll we'll roll on over to Horizon. Go do some PTV racing anyway. Yeah, the reclaimer has unfortunately. I think Parsifal summed it up best when he said it was an incredibly expensive paperweight in the game. Um, which, yeah, was always a shame because it was, it was really cool. I mean, I would, I would say it had some use in that it was a really great FPS level. But, uh, but no, it's, it's been a shame for a ship that clearly took that many, that many hours to, to build. The only feature that it had was that it was a cool-looking ship. Um, oh, damn it, Sly. You've made me want a bacon sandwich. Now I'm trying to work out whether there's anywhere near me which will do a bacon sandwich delivery at 8 p.m. But uh but I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's gonna have to be pizza or burritos. So uh I will use the kind birthday money I've been donated to make one of those culinary selections. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen like twenty four hour or like open late greasy spoons here. That was something which was always great in London.
Now, this has been the common experience of the PTU, waiting for things to load. You're getting the real PTU experience now. It was a far too smooth event until, until this point. I have to give it a few more seconds and then I might have to just do the old Alt F4. Yeah. Maybe patience. Well, if I was usually playing on my own, patience would be the uh patience would be the thing to do there. But not when I'm trying to show people around. And the the reclaimer, yeah, the reclaimer art is is incredible looking, and definitely salvage was always like a always a game loop I was interested in. But um, particularly after I got got hooked on mining, when I got hooked on mining, I was just like, yes, please, just more industrial game loops. Um, so it'll be be interesting to see. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. King. Yeah, it's just going to be a bit of a chilled evening of the PTU. Which, yeah, you're right, there's been another PTU patch, so maybe that's why it was so smooth and I was having such an enjoyable experience. Because I was the only one still playing that branch. But, uh, didn't get as lucky as uh, MT the other day, though, when everybody else was kicked out of PTU. And he'd managed to stay on the CIG server <laughs> on the first day it got live. Scrolling down the uh, scrolling down the all chat thing, and it was just like CIG, CIG, CIG. Had all the frames, no crashes. <laughs> so yeah, we just gonna have to do a quick update. It seems. But that might mean we might be able to get onto EU servers, which might make things a little bit a little bit smoother on my end. So that said, I've never personally seen any real issues with playing on American servers or even on Australian ones. There there are some points where like because the traffic is so busy on EU servers because it's our like peak time. I've had a better experience playing on, Auss on Aussie servers where the lag is just sort of offset by the desync. <laughs> so, so yeah, sometimes if you're having a bad time and servers are being really trash where you are, just like consider, consider flipping yourself to the other side of the world. Right, that PTU update is installed. I should probably take a quick look and see if there are any uh, see if there are any patch notes up for that in the old tracker. Let's just see. Oh, there's so many channels in Discord. There we go, tracker. I see. No, can't see any patch notes. I would have to delve into Spectrum. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting, sort of. When everything is, like, playing really well, when everything is really behaving itself, then ping does matter. But the reality is it's so rare that everything is... Uh, Everything is behaving itself. <laughs> but uh, you don't have to worry about that too often, to be honest. It's much more down to sort of server stability, um, which then filters into desync, all that jazz. So yeah, sometimes it can be um can be better playing completely away from your home region. Particularly if particularly if you're at peak times. I mean it's obviously awful if you if you're playing during Aussie peak times in the EU and then you decide to go to Aussie servers. So. Oh, 
right, just remind me in a few minutes at 8 p.m. I'm going to need to give Krug his dinner. Otherwise, you know, I don't, I don't want to be calling the RSPCA. That would be a different type of swatting. But yeah, with a bit of luck, right, so panels are working again. I'm getting dragged straight back to my bed. But with a little bit of luck, hopefully we might be able to sell that salvage. That said, it's PTU. I expect nothing. Happiness equals expectations minus reality. So keep those expectations low and it's hard to be uh, disappointed. That's good. Matey here. Oh, he, he was thinking about taking the danger elevator. Never take the danger elevator. Oh, how are you doing, Grumpy? Thank you very much, mate. Yeah, I, um, I just tactically left it a few days before subjecting myself to too much more PTU. It looks like it looks like it's going great, to be honest. Cannot complain. Now this is the tricky part. I know my way around Lawville in terms of getting really quickly out to the spaceport. But I don't need to go to the spaceport today. I need to try and go to the TDD. So let's see if I can uh can remember how to get to anywhere else in Lawville. That uh, the Square. This is what we're really going for, isn't it? Guessing maybe across this bridge. Yeah, I'm sorry if this is awful. This is just proof that I I have. Ah, there we go. Other side. I have no idea on on the inner workings of Northville outside of the one place I go straight away. Oh, hey, Star Dreams. How you doing? People are assembling just in time to see that I don't know my way around Lawville. That's brilliant. Just, just want to get to the train station. Want to try desperately to uh, to sell some salvage finally. There we go. There we go. Central line. Yeah, I just feel like a bit of a you know, feeling my way around in the dark when it comes to uh, when it comes to the rest of Lawville. Easiest place to get to the spaceport if you just remember to stick to your left. But getting anywhere else, total nightmare, total maze. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's an unfortunate date to be honest for my birthday. I was pretty. I was pretty salty about it as a child. I'm not gonna lie. I was. I was pretty annoyed. My brother has a birthday in, in May. He is a sort of late spring, early summer baby. And he, he I felt, had it, uh, he had it a lot better than me. I begrudged him that. You know, that's, that spreads out your birthdays, right? A birthday and Christmas. Whereas I had all of three days to just, you know, max celebration. Um, and always a bit of a kick in the teeth, you know. I hope I hope none of my uncles and aunties are watching. It'd be a bit embarrassing, but you know, I got quite a lot of happy Christmas and birthdays. And then you look over at your your big brother, and you're just like, we've just got exactly the same present. That is that is unacceptable to the to the seven year old brain. But um, but it got a lot better when I when I was a teenager and I started playing guitars and surfing because surfboards and guitars are expensive. And if you can persuade your mum and dad to, to give you, so you, you spend most of your life rebelling against the idea of a joint Christmas and birthday present. And then, then you're like, no, I'd actually quite like a joint birthday and Christmas present, please. Yeah, to be fair, that is something I do sometimes do when it comes to navigating Lawville. Um, I will sometimes just, you know, take the train route I know 
to the spaceport and then take the train from the spaceport back to the central business district, but undoubtedly a bit quicker this way. Uh, welcome, Forgotten Hero. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it's only about like my fourth time streaming, so uh, so don't worry. You haven't missed my streaming career. This is uh, this is a new thing. I've just been trying to trying to push my way out of my comfort zone little by little. Uh, I'm gonna try and do a lot more of it in three eighteen. So because uh, it's quite fun. It's quite fun if you if you completely take the pressure off yourself. You just sit back and enjoy it. Then it's um, yeah, I can see the appeal for sure. But yeah, I was conscious I haven't really done any any three eighteen stuff. So uh, so I thought I'd thought I'd stick a quick stream up before Christmas. Right, let's work out. Let's work out if our if our salvage did it survive. I mean, these HUDs are really cool. I have to say, this is this is my first time at a TDD in in three eighteen, and yeah, looks like sure enough we have our uh, have our hold full. So yeah, ninety two ninety two point four k for a full twelve SCU. So what about seven thousand seven hundred uh per SCU? Yeah, seven point six nine 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 all the nines per unit. So that's a pretty good rate. I mean it did not take that long to put together, but like I say, you just don't read anything into these sorts of rates for um for how much money you're gonna be making doing salvaging. Cause it's you know there's there's just so much um there's so much salvage around i cannot imagine that is how it is intended to be like it just makes no sense the the only thing it makes sense in terms of is we want you all to test salvaging um so yeah you, know, you literally will not be able to miss it uh it will you'll just be falling over things to salvage anywhere there are asteroids so if that is how they intend it, then it's going to make mining a nightmare. That's all I can say. Right, let's get the train to train to the station at the spaceport, and let's get off this rock. I reckon. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. So, so yeah, the rates the rates of salvage versus quant mining are definitely lower. That said, there's a lot of stuff which is quite hard to um, obviously like impossible to know about it at the point at this point. So, mining with a stock prospector because that that was effectively right salvaging like hole stripping with a stock vulture um and obviously in order to in order to get to the rates of top prospector mining like you need to kit it out um so i i wonder you know there's there's obviously different modules that we need to play around with need to test um there's a bun bunch of stuff and like i wonder whether there's there's space um because i noticed that the the vulture has space for up to four modules so i think there are definitely some efficiency gains maybe there are going to be some modules which just don't come stock which costs like you know a bit like you go and buy your lancet laser for your uh your prospector um so so yeah i think it's it's gonna be interesting to see i definitely think there's like um there's going to be a lot of efficiency gains to work on in terms of multi crewing and, and doing it small operations, large operations. Because there's there's obviously more. You know, when you're in a prospector, you just go get that 32 SEU. You don't have to leave your seat to do any of it. Uh, if you could just teleport into your prospector seat, you'd, you could just sit there through the entire thing. Um, 
whereas obviously there's a lot more moving around in the vulture so so that's where other people could definitely help yeah that'd be interesting yeah there's there's the whole extra like part of the game loop still to come um that we haven't just haven't seen yet so yeah that's definitely gonna be very interesting very limited on ships on this account so uh so it looks like we're gonna take the vulture for a spin over to horizon <laughs> yeah like i say it is a bit of a commute simulator at times um I so said, let's just, I'm just curious, I'm just curious, I noticed there was another PTU patch, so while I am literally stood at New Deal, I am just going to go and check to see if any new ships have, have popped up for sale. I'm particularly interested to see how much the, uh, the Hull A is going to cost, because I think that could be one of the best ships to, uh, to pair in as a salvage transporter. But no. No, no joy in that regard. Gonna have to wait to see uh, to see if there are any shiny new new ships. I also I I'm really looking forward to seeing the uh, the Centurion as a cash uh, as a um, AUEC viable ship. Particularly since we're getting a uh, getting an updated jump town. And. Yeah, that is a is a definitely a floating terminal in New Deal. It's a, it's it's a it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> yeah, so I would say, so, I mean, salvage is currently coming in as a bit behind quant mining, but you know, obviously that was that was just stock prospector straight out the straight out the door, and also, you know, unlike. Um, Unlike quant mining, I didn't have to wait a day to uh, to cash it out. You just take it to the uh, take it to the TDD, sell it. So yeah, let's jump up the ladder. Drake Vulture, best daily driver. What? It's only because I'm playing on my old account and I have barely any other ships on it. So it will do. Like I say, I am I am quite in love with this ship. Right. Just one hundred percent make sure I got some got fuel. Quite cheap to run as well by the looks of the old vulture. And then yeah, I reckon let's uh let's head on over to Horizon. Because I really want to go and check out that buggy, uh, the the PTV course. That's probably the uh, the second most looked forward to thing for me in three eighteen. So I was pointing skyward. Yeah, I think there's meant there's meant to be a bunch of places you can sell salvage. So yeah, I saw the scrapyards are uh, are also an option. But yeah, I just wanted to do a do a stop by Lawville anyway, just to check out and see if there was anything new in the ship shops. But unfortunately, not. So, um, well, I think that's quite an interesting thing. They could look to bring in for a f for a few different sort of commodities, particularly like the ones that we process ourselves, like RMC, like being able to sell them at different locations. Yeah, and I think that filters in as well to. Um, what the cargo refactor should ultimately allow, which is like, you know, being able to transfer cargo between players willingly. Like we've had cargo decks at 
Everest Harbour, Port Tresla, Bajini Point for a long time now without any real uh, meaning to them. And something which would be really cool to see would be, um, you know, I want to get back out and salvage because that's what I'm doing. I don't want to spend my time like running back and forth to a TDD. So maybe I could sell you my RMC at Everest Harbour, letting me get straight back out there. And then you as a uh, as a trader could be happily running, you know, a a short haul route just between like Everest Harbour and Lawville, uh banking the profit on the RMC. Alright, let's get ourselves going. Okay. Right, we are crusader bound. If you guys are gonna forgive me i'm gonna give krug his dinner um he has been completely knackered though I, I i think he went on two big walks today with uh with the dog walker went with the little dogs in the morning went with the big dogs in the afternoon so he is thoroughly thoroughly done uh but i should go and stick some food in front of him in case he's a bit hungry so uh so i will be back in about five minutes uh, hopefully, by which time we will have will have arrived on this stock drive at uh, at Crusader. So right, I'll be right back.
All right, there we go. Krug was unsurprisingly quite peckish. Even though he wasn't that happy about getting woken up. Yeah, it'd be, uh, be interesting to see. Interesting to see how the price of salvage changes. It's also like it's it's quite time consuming. It's not it's not a game breaking credits per hour rate, even as it stands. Um, and I would imagine finding salvage is going to get a lot harder. So. But yeah, has anyone um, has anyone hit up the the little race track at Horizon yet? Or done any of the FPS missions? Quite interested to go and try some of this out. This is my belated proper tour of the PTU and what it has to offer. So yeah, so I, th I think the price of RMC will stay pretty much where it is, um, at least for at least for a couple of patches. But I would say the the ease of location of of derelicts will will lower quite a lot. Oh, thank you very much, El Lolly. Held or lied. There we go. That's a tongue twister of a name, but thank you very much. My happy birthday. It was a very good one. I'd say. Nice and nice and chilled out. Yeah, exactly. Making salvage is gonna be where it's at, I think. You know what? I wonder, I wonder, as I drop out around Crusader. Because I think even I should be capable of taking down. Oh, I'm getting quantum interdicted, so we'll see. Maybe I can make some salvage immediately. Got quantum interdicted, but there's no deal round. So yeah, let's just take a look just before I go down to Horizon. Oh, there's all these new racing missions. That's really cool. That's going to be incredibly cool. It's a good job we got a race team, isn't it? But let's just see where my tracker training them is. All right. Selling. That's not too close. Let's see. Let's do some... Rec Vulture bounty hunting. Got two bulldogs. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you, Grana. As I say, year older, not any wiser. Yeah, let's see. Let's see, I, I, I will request help if I turn out to have bitten off a lot more than I can chew. Worst case scenario, this ends up on SC fails, right? But it's okay, because uh, I'll just blame the ship. <laughs> Not my piloting abilities. I said I was just making sure that I'd actually got some flares on this ship. I do. That's good to know. All right. Good. We can get an OM point to, uh, to bounce around the planet. Because, yeah, I'm just interested to see sort of what the, uh, what the salvage rates are like from, from bounties. Sorry, if I'm looking under the table, it's because of Krug. But we have a secret weapon in the entertainment of the French Bulldog, and that is a yak milk. 
This instantly has his has his attention. Would you guys like to meet Krug quickly? You can see if he'll come up and say hello. Or we'll just wheel back and see if he'll come into view. Go on, buddy. So yeah, this is Krug, where's the camera? He's a bit confused. It's his first time streaming. But he's done his best. He's done a yak yeah, no. Krug's now very confused and very happy. There we go. That's uh, that's probably gonna hold his attention. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Krug's not a pug. You take that back, can I? Krug is a French guy. Nothing against Krug. Nothing against pugs. Just to be clear. Just against the misclassification of my French bulldog. Got to stick up for him, you know. Right, so this, this could be a terrible idea. Or it could be easy. I get the feeling it will be nothing in between. Yeah, he is a great, he is a great co-worker. To be fair, it's really cute. He he won't he won't go to bed if I like. Sometimes I stay up quite late to um, to edit videos, and if I am on one of those nights when I'm staying up, and sometimes it's like you, know, I'm a bit of a night owl, so sometimes it's you know two, three, four in the morning. He will he he will not go to bed until I'm done. He comes and I've got a chair next to me. He comes and sits in the uh, sits in the chair. Bill, he's he's my first co-producer. So, but my co-producer is currently completely engrossed in the uh, in the yak milk chew. So, seems to have accepted that we should have have a little bit more time with the stream. Yeah, let's see. I mean, they're not big guns, but equally it's got a fairly reasonable amount of shots. You know, 54 is standard. Ooh. Let's see if we can get my target status up in time. Oh, against an Origin M50. It had to be an M50 in that mode, didn't it? Let's see. It's not going to be my nicest flying. I'm going to warn you guys of that immediately. The Eclipse, I'm a little bit less worried about. Well, okay, that was nice. Very conveniently, these seem to be standing on the spot. So, again, I draw your attention to that message saying this is not, not the finished game. PTU patches have all kinds of bugs. It's going to be a slow death for this eclipse, it seems. Right. Now let's try and keep an eye on that eclipse as it goes down to the ground. And let's see if any of this becomes decent salvage. They did not have their morning crayons. You are quite right. 
there we go debris 84 and that's that's like what we were looking at earlier right so so all of that oh am i still getting shot at by something yep something which doesn't seem to have to appear on my radar nice Oh, the turrets, of course. Well, okay. Smooth, loud, smooth. Should we do another bounty? Let's do another bounty and hope it's not right on top of, like, some, uh... On top of some turrets. Let's just check check my status for a second. Hmm. MFDs. I mean, looks like looks like I took a bit of damage, but nothing to get too worried about. I don't think at this point. Let's take a look. See if there's see if there's any any VLRTs. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, and conveniently, asteroids around yellow. Okay, I feel a little bit more confident about. Well, I don't know. That gives me asteroids to crash into. So do I feel more confident? As ever, I'm going to blame the ship if it goes wrong. Got a little of that major talking balance, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm mostly just interested to see if we get... Because there was definitely sort of areas on that eclipse um, that were green. Whereas we have the yellow and the red on the uh, on the derelict date ninety, and I think I think you guys are absolutely right. I think it's basically the quality of the salvage. It would just be interesting to see if that's um, when when it comes to to actually the extraction rates. If we get higher higher extraction rates, I could pop to an outpost to repair. Am I a careful person, though? No. I'll, let's see if I learn my lesson. If I learn my lesson, then maybe. Because we might have to come back for it. I can't remember where did I set my spawn. Arc L1. Safe. <laughs> Just don't show them. Don't show them my backside. That's gonna be the uh, it's gonna be the key to this engagement. It's only, it's only a tiny bit of red on the very back. Can't even see the damage. It's fine. Because, yeah, I think this, this could form the, um, the basis of a really good salvage op. Sort of using, using the bounties to go and take down ships. Um... Bringing in salvage crews to to handle them, having some logistics crews to uh, to keep offloading the RMC, and then ultimately as well, because you know, if you don't need to go back, then then you're gonna start needing things like the staff error, which is really exciting from my perspective. This is where we're gonna go from from none of the. Uh, None of the AI having had their morning coffee to them all being like crack hot shots. Just preparing you for my ultimate failure. Or right, Mustang Delta. He does appear to be very stationary. Suits our purposes. We're just here for the salvage. So, you know, if he doesn't want to fight back, I'm all right with that right now. Should probably make sure my guns are charging, though. This feels a little bit, little bit like fish in a barrel, though. Right, so I'm pretty sure what's happened there is he is soft deathed. Because he's still a red. He has completed my bounty. 
And let's also see. Am I able to start stripping him straight away? No, so I think what I will have to do is finish him off. So there again, yeah, we've got a green chunk. So I think this is down to the quality. Let's just make sure I don't tear. Uh... And yeah, let's see. Yeah, so these are, these are all salvageable pieces, which is really cool. Let's just get our braid module on it. We want this to be nice and so we can have a realistic test. Maybe there's some more on the other side. That's a little bit on the disappointing side in terms of the yields we're getting off there. If we're getting any yields at all. And obviously we're just crashing into him, which doesn't help. No, no joy there. Let's just try one of the other pieces. Like this convenient one. Would help if I could uh would help if I could stop hitting them as well. This is where you really need. Oh. This is where you really need tractor beams to uh to hold these things in place. Yeah, that is true. So when you looked when you looked in terms of the ratios of the uh, the eight ninety, I'm not sure that a uh, I'm not sure how much luck we're gonna have salvaging a a Mustang Alpha or Delta. I think it was, but we should have a lot more a lot more fun when it comes to things like hammerheads, that sort of stuff. So I think it's going to be a case of getting as quickly to the the ERTs as we can, going after things like Hammerheads and Valkyries, which have uh, a little bit more meat on the bones. So yeah, that was uh, 0 0.05 of an SCU. So I don't think we're going to get rich hitting Mustangs. But yeah, for now, let's go, let's stick on the uh, the original idea. Let's head on down to Orison, see if we can find this go-karting track. Legally distinct go-karting. Definitely not Mario Kart. Probably got my stream demonetized for saying that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely larger ships are going to be offering more impressive yield. And I wonder, I might might just have done something wrong there as well, because I think like a uh, something which should definitely be a factor is, you know, you should be encouraged to soft death, in my opinion. You should be able to salvage a ship that's soft deathed. Um, so... Because then that could could potentially offer much more in terms of salvage if you haven't destroyed it fully. And you know, with the with the combat beacons and stuff, we got things like Idris's out there. So that's gonna be really interesting. Like I can't wait to see a group of ships descend on an Idris and then immediately after it's dead a bunch of reclaimers coming in with a load of little little vultures weaving in and out as well. That's going to be really cool to coordinate.
yeah, yeah. So, so one one thing which I do, which I do, which I would strongly, you know, you can't tell people to do stuff they don't want to do. Um, but I would say, you know, if you are playing in PTUs and stuff, do file bug reports if you can. Like if it's not too much of a hassle your end. So, like with that, you know, there's. It could have been a, uh, could have been intended, could not have been intended, but there's no harm in just raising an issue council thing to just say, you know, testing it a couple more times because I could have just been being a noob, uh, literally. Making sure that you can't salvage soft death ships. Starting an issue council thing. You know, it's this sort of feedback that, that really is the purpose of the PTU. There we go, there's the spaceport. Because, yeah, it brings in, brings in some interesting um, sort of mechanics, doesn't it? Like, you know, you want your bounty hunters to kill the bounties, but you want them to try and do as little damage as they can. Just tip them just over the edge, you know, not... Here's nine size nine torpedoes. Goodbye, Idris. But actually, like, you know, working to defang it. And that's one of the things which is so exciting about the potential future of uh, capital ships. You know, it'd be very rare that you would actually just react to death and explode. Um... So, you know, you can imagine a cap ship that's been taken out of the fight and do you have a crew who can pull together at that moment and get that ship back up and running, get back into it. So, yeah, I have to say, love Drake Vulture, would not recommend as Daily Driver. probably not this is probably one of the more sedate journeys into horrors that i've had i usually take to using an origin m50 but i'm really happy to see that the flight ceiling the the ceiling for departing horizon has has dropped because it's it's a really cool landing location but i've just always you know what i mean like i i don't think i'm alone in being somebody who generally avoided horizon until had to go there So yeah, it'd be good to see uh good to see Orison getting a bit more use, in my opinion. Well, I definitely got a landing message, but I haven't been assigned a pad, it doesn't seem. Might just need to call ATC and get myself a quick reminder of where I'm meant to go. Act like it was my fault. Yeah, that's why I'm headed to do Silas. I'm I'm gonna try and find the find the go karts. I need to get a head start on Tint and Fedical. I'll briefly be the uh be the frontier consolidated lap holder if I can just get round a lap. It won't last long, but I can still stick my name on the trophy, you know. It's gonna be particularly fun playing it with mouse and keyboard. I need to uh I need to get my get my gamepad skills honed for the Daymar rally, I think. Which uh which yeah we've we've entered four or five teams from Frontier for the Daymar rally. I have uh decided to go for the the truck category. Gonna be driving the little Ursa that could. Apparently it's Apparently a good time would be something around five, six hours. So, uh, so yeah, I really need to ask Mrs. Guns' permission for that, though. It's going to be another, another full day of star sitting.
Yeah, convenient, convenient exit from the cut uh, from the vulture for sure. I keep on wanting to call it a cutter. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Don't fly with it. I usually fly with Hosas. But I think um, I would use a gamepad for ground vehicles if if I was going to choose. Particularly, I just think like particularly for something like the um, like the Daymar Rally, which is going to be multiple hours in the chair. I think being able to kick back with a gamepad is going to be the uh, be my preferred option. Right, Horizon Vision Center. Is that the platform where they had the um, had Invictus? Let's see. I'm sure there is a shuttle which goes directly to the Vision Center. But no, I, I think only Chris Roberts flies with a an Xbox controller. <laughs> Fly with a dance mat. I would pay to see that. That would make a great video. That said, I I, I can understand the appeal of you know a, a gamepad. I mean, also like, yeah, don't. I wouldn't knock it too much because like I can go to a like I bought my Xbox One controller second hand for about forty pounds. Whereas like you know, even a quite basic HOSAS like the Thrustmaster T sixteen thousands, like a pair of those is gonna run you for 120. Like so um and you know, obviously there are people who in a position where it's it's much easier for them to use a gamepad, so so that's really cool that it makes it accessible to those people. The 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 bit it lets you down on flying though is you just don't physically have enough buttons, so so you end up having to use like a a controller and the keyboard anyway. Yeah, we found the route to the vision center. Let's hop on one of Origin shuttles. Yeah, I find I find Hosas. Hosas is just like the best thing about it for me. Really, is is the immersion. It's just the feels really nice when you got like two sticks in your hands, and it just marries up with a lot of what you're seeing in the ships. So yeah, but then yeah, there's and they keep they but then they keep adding stuff, don't they? For like, so you know, power triangle movements and all of that stuff, and like a lot of stuff is on the MFDs, and that can be quite hard to get around with a gamepad. But when it comes to driving a car, like in the game, like a, a gamepad is perfectly, uh, perfectly viable, and I think arguably better than you know. One thing I have tried is tried, you know, uh, HOSAM, like hand on stick and mouse for, for vehicles. Like it's quite good for the, um, the rock. That is how I will tend to, tend to set myself up when I'm rock mining. But yeah, it's, um, I think for racing ground vehicles, I think a control a gamepad would be my favoured personal choice. But there's no there's no right or wrong way. That's the thing. You just do whatever feels comfortable to you. And as you will see, because I when I've got all the streaming gear out, it's a lot easier to just play on keyboard and mouse, and rather than clamping my sticks in. And Star Citizen is perfectly enjoyable on keyboard and mouse. There are a lot of really great great pilots out there who are KBM. So, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. So you got, like, chat pad on the PS5 controllers. They come with those stock, don't they? Yeah, so that gives you your extra keys. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, whatever, it's whatever's comfortable to play, isn't it? That's the... That's the most important thing. 
Like, there's no, there's no right or wrong. I think you will find certain things, you know, like, yeah, skill, all, all skill being like netted out, then probably like if you if you take two completely equal people, then probably Hosas wins in the air, and keyboard and mouse wins in FPS combat. You know, I don't, I don't think. Don't think there's too much dispute in that. That's that's been proven by like every crossplay FPS title there is. I used to like, for for a brief moment I thought I was getting really good at Call of Duty until I realised that I was the only uh, PC player next to a bunch of uh, <laughs> bunch of PlayStation and Xbox controller wielders. But thankfully, you know, Star Set isn't one of those games where it's just constant 100% PvP um, can be if you want it to be but there's plenty of stuff to do which is you can be more than comfortable doing sat on a couch how I, I might I might get myself set up like that because sometimes that's just how I fancy playing right you know sitting on the couch controller in hand right seems I've come to the right place there were definitely a lot of signs up Hopefully I haven't taken a wrong turn and completely missed myself. Yeah, that's a good sign. Reckon it's in the convention hall or have I just completely missed the turn off that I should have taken? No, I think I am definitely in the right place. Well, wow, this this looks fantastic. I gotta say, this is this is low key. Like, I'm a I'm an industrial goon. <laughs> what is this guy doing? So I'm an industrial goon, so I had to be most excited for salvage, but secretly, secretly, the child inside me who wasted far too much of his life playing Mario Kart was excited for this <laughs> let's just let's just use the third person camera to get a get a bit more of a look in this looks amazing i'm particularly excited because i can just i can just already sort of see what what the guys in fc racing are gonna be doing don't be doing with this. So many cool, cool upgrades to racing coming in this patch that should just make it that that extra bit more accessible. Yeah, we can we can just host a night here. Yeah, you don't have to learn learn the track as such. You just go and drive it. Let's see. Let's get powered on. <laughs> well right most importantly which way do I go first I'm going to guess it's right I'm going to guess those are grids and this guy thinks it's the other way instant collision but yeah let's go for it remember the oversteer in the, uh, the PGV nobody saw me cut that corner This is this is where keyboard and mouse really suffers like absolutely no throttle control. But I have to say, well done, CIG. <laughs> this this just Oh, oh the first the first of many crashes into the railings. Oh, oh. oh, this is good. I've got someone to chase now. Wow, I thought I thought it was going to overtake him. But it turns out we are as bad as one another. Me and me and my fellow fellow PTV enthusiast. Everybody else is out scraping holes. 
we're the two guys on the track managing somehow to crash into one another. Uh, did I set my spawn? I did not set my spawn nearby. I was too excited about the racing. It doesn't look... Oh, shit. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's that life-threatening, right? Oh, there we go. I've I've knocked my rival out. This is. And is it just me? Am I? Am I the only one who thinks this was an incredibly good use of CRG's time? Non facetiously. This is this is incredibly cool. And, and with that, I think I'm officially the, the record holder of FC. I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty horrible on a mouse, mouse and keyboard. <laughs> but considering it's still this fun on a mouse and keyboard, I am I'm really looking forward to getting some better controls on. And particularly when we can get, you know, full, like, how many cars did they have back there? Was it sort of eight or ten? You know, when you can get the full uh, full experience. Go-karting around these tracks. Oh, my rival's creeping up behind me. I just took a corner pretty badly, and I'm, I'm messing it up with my three-point turn. He's gone. But he's fluffed it, and I, I've given him another little love tap there. <laughs> he's in a death spin. I think I'm going as long as I can make it round. This this was made in spare time. That is that is mind blowing. That is amazing. And such a good such a good use of like, you know I always from the the moment I started playing SC I was I was pretty sold on the whole the the cities like having the cities i know one of one of my best mates uh we played elite dangerous together oh oh no don't talk and drive but we played uh played elite dangerous together quite a bit and and he was just like the concept of getting in and out of your seat and all that stuff ship interiors landing zones nonsense like you don't need it it's not the game but to me, it's it's what makes what makes SC have like the makings of a great MMO. Um, the fact that you have like cities which have the potential to like hold some real life to them, and you know this while it might seem frivolous. So I just get over the line so I make sure I right there we go. I have registered another lap. So while this sort of stuff might seem frivolous, it's like it's the stuff which is going to mean that you know there's a reason for communities to actually congregate in the major landing zones, right? Which, uh, which yeah, I think I think the game needs. So let's go ahead, park this bad boy up for the uh, for the next caller. Oh, this company, I, I still, I genuinely, that's, that's time well spent, in my opinion. It's just, that was, that was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm almost going to like, I'm going to try and save that for myself a little bit. Because um, I, I can't wait to see that with, with, you know, a full crew down. Because we could have, we could have some great, like, you know, you've got eight people in the race, but also... Well, before I leave, you know, there's the whole. There we go. There's some stairs up there. Like, so it's actually something that you could come down. Like, if you're having a race day, you can get eight people onto the track. But then you can also have sort of people, uh, people in the viewing, get to watch your mates in their uh, in their races, give them a cheer on. 
and like yeah if you have a make make a bit of a tournament of it right that's that's gonna be incredibly cool but yeah all the all the detail which has gone into this i know i know some people who don't like sc that much will be saying that it's total overkill but but for me this is it is the sort of thing which is going to um filter quite nicely into into making it a much more living breathing place you know oh, i need to go back to the expo lobby it's like you i i i approve highly of the idea of running running some sort of betting ring but like, I think if you're giving seven to one odds on Fed winning, I think you're going to be out of business pretty quick. Oh, this is cool as well. So you've still got the merch stores. You can still go back and get your uh, get your Argo t-shirts, get your Drake t-shirts. I wonder. I wondered if they were going to put any uh, any sort of racing merch in here. That that could be a could be a good addition, I reckon. That is true. Also assuming that you haven't, you know, bribed Fed to take a... Uh, you know, lose the corner on the last corner. Make it look good. No, no races will be rigged. I'll update the server rules. We'll have strictly against rigged races. Thank you very much. The other thing I wanted to take a look at, I wonder if the um wonder if the platform missions are in for Orison. I wonder if there was a bound uh, was a ra one of these racing ones. No, so there's no None of these race missions, I might have to get somebody who's actually good at racing to come and take a look at these race missions and explain to me what's going on in them. Let's see, there were, there were meant to be um, missions on the other platforms, weren't there? Like the ones which got used for Siege of Horizon. Down the rabbit hole, you, you know, if I was capable of embarrassment, then I would, I would be a bit worried that I'd put you to sleep with my pace of racing. Yeah, let's just take a look. What would those, um, need to do initial bunker missions. Krug, do I have time to do initial bunker missions? It's not quite as long as it was to leave Orison. He's still got his yak milk. He's still okay. Good two and a half hours. Hmm. Yeah, should I go for a bunker? I can go and embarrass myself with a bunker. And then I can probably cheekily backspace if I set my spawn to Orison General. Before I go for a bunker mission. So it's just the just the qualification mission I'll need to do. Uh, is this the spaceport? This is the spaceport, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so I better head across to Cloudview and get my spawn set. Just so I don't have to traipse all the way back. Um, and then I can probably do a do a cheeky backspace in order to get myself back to Orison a little bit quicker. Hmm, there is yeah, there is new SPK as well. That's gonna be really cool. Jump town whenever you want it, basically. There's so many there's so many things this patch. There's so many features. I am very happy that I have some time off 
to to go through all of this during during my Christmas break. Because yeah, there's there's the updates to Jump Town itself as well. Finally, getting a new entrance, so it won't be quite a you know camp the one door fest. Um, and yeah, hopefully over time they're going to put in the uh, the other ships. So the Centurion will be open, will be available to all, I think. But we'll go and do the uh, go and do the first mercenary mission. See if that unlocks some of the Horizon platform ones. All right, there, there we we actually have a uh, retake SPK mission come up. I don't know. I don't know if I'm if I feel like getting shot in FPS combat just now. Let's see. Let's uh. Let's head to Horizon General first, which is across that way. But I need a bridge. I mean, I don't want I don't want to convert I don't want to curse it, but this PTU is making me sort of think, you know. Think back to just a couple of days ago when it was horrendous. <laughs> like the the I'd not seen some of the bugs that, that I got hit by. Waking up without any of my clothes. Game just stole my armor. If you can hear any heavy breathing and chewing noises in the background, I I apologize on Krug's behalf, but He's getting quite stuck into the yak milk. Uh, this would be a bit of a bit of an annoyance if we can't set our spawn through the uh, the insurance terminals, but we can always just go. Ah, it's taken this moment to. Uh, I cursed it, didn't I? I cursed it. I got another one of those MFD bugs. Right. Mm, MFD bug. I think we're gonna have to do an exit to menu. See if we can relog servers. Hey, Bladio, how you doing, mate? But yeah. The game does seem to be locking up a bit when you're exiting. Um, and we do seem to be getting hit by these bugs every now and again with um, with the consoles all losing their, uh, their displays. Hey, Biker Joe, how you doing, mate? But yeah, other than that, I mean, like, I've had to had to relog a couple of times over a period of two and a half hours. That really is unrecognizable compared to the PTU just earlier this week. So yeah, it's very much a case of say la vie. Just do a quick quick relog. Get my spawn set. Go and do a first bunker mission. Hopefully don't die. Hopefully uh, then we can make it back to Horizon and go and see if any of these, these new platform missions are up. We are also against a uh, an unknown timer in terms of like my wife will get home at some point. Um, and just to save you all from the the madness that will ensue that will if it happens be be stream over time <laughs> cuz uh, i don't expect krug to show restraint during you know mother is home time that's um 
that doesn't happen. I'm very much a third class citizen in my own home. I accept this. It's just part of life. It's the life I chose. Wow, big big storms where you are, Bladio. Whereabouts are you, mate? You in a part of the world where big storms means like seriously shit the bed, big storm. Or are you like me and in the UK and big storm is like it's a bit windy. <laughs> the the papers find like you know weird stats like most snowfall in twenty seven years. Still only about 12 inches, but it was the most in 26 years. So does that be all like uh, geared up for Christmas? Or Ontario? Yeah, yeah, okay. Real storms. When you say a big storm, you mean an actual big storm. Everybody, uh, everybody getting rave for Christmas. Worked out what you got to cook yet? We managed to do that today. This is the joy of having Christmas with just two of you, which uh, I love seeing my family. Did a really big family Christmas last year. It was great. But I'm looking forward to a zero commitment Christmas. Just me and the missus. We'll cook ourselves some nice, nice fish, as we decided, found today. And then we will probably watch a lot of movies, is, the, is mainly the plan. Might even, I might, might play some Star Citizen, I maybe, maybe, maybe will play some League of Legends, because occasionally me and my uni friends get together and subject ourselves to, to League once a year. And we try not to fall out over it. It's hard. To, well, dead out of it. It's, it's hard not to fall. It's hard to fall out with each other over Christmas, even if you are playing League of Legends. To be fair, it might not be the worst idea. I've just realised I am down to 22% on my water. It might be an idea to go and check in via a medical bed anyway and just get... Just get all there. Intravenous burrito-id up. Intravenous burrito-id? Intravenous burrito-ed, I think that would be. But yeah, I think uh, I think Orison is going to be my going to be my home location in the next patch on my main. Obviously, a lot quicker to get off now than it was. So yeah, just do a crug check. Seems to maybe be losing interest in the Ack milk, which isn't a good sign. Let's go ahead and do a check-in. Four, five, room three. Can somebody take a note of that for when I get lost in about in a couple of minutes? A oh, bar just across the street. That's a pretty good Christmas plan, I gotta say. There's no, there's no washing up in that plan, is there? That is a good idea. Open. This is my room. Seems good. Enjoy my intravenous burrito and spawn resetting, so that's all good. Right. 
right. I think that leaves us pretty much as ready as we're going to be. Let's hit the ground floor. Right, so... How risky, how risky should I feel with this? I feel like... A level 1 bunker mission is something I should be able to creep into with an undersuit and a pistol. And that way, I'll keep my nice gear here for if we manage to get one of those platform missions. But on the other hand, I could stuff it up. There is also the option, I guess, I could hit up Strata's center and I could just grab myself some some nice cheap gear to take with me. I'm just thinking about taking the backspace elevator to cut out the time to get back to Orison. So yeah, oh, that is a very finely dressed young man. So I seem to remember from from Siege that there is a limited selection of of gear and weapons here. So let's not risk let's not risk the nice stuff, right? Just to be clear, I'm usually heavily against this. Uh, don't get overly attached to your gear. I'm just thinking for the convenience factor though. Uh, I would usually have Usually have prepared much better. But let's just grab grab some of this light armor. Give myself a little bit of a of potential. And obviously, of course, I'm just gonna hide behind the guards and try and let them do their work. So let's grab an LH eighty six. A magazine or two, and there's a uh, oh, what's the name of the the assault rifle? Uh, not assault rifle, SMG. It's a C something, but the name is eluding me. A C fifty four. Hey Rex, how you doing, mate? Grab a couple of mags for that. Yeah, you can grab the grab the arrow yellow armor, can't you, for cousin crows? I just I've been lazy. I'll be honest. Just avoiding one more stop. We can. Uh... I of course have forgotten to pick up a helmet. So we better get ourselves one of those as well. Frames maybe leave a little bit to be desired around here, I'm sorry. Might have to turn down some of my performance settings for PTU. PTU life. Let's just grab a Venture Helmet. There we go. Hopefully this should clear up a bit when we get out into space. I'm thinking as well, performance like frames-wise should be better over on the platforms as well, because a bit like with... Um, Oh dear, that's not a good sign. So yeah, that's another inventory bug which has been popping up every now and again. Uh, you do sometimes just completely lose your inventories at major cities. But again, all this should get smoothed out. Right, sorry, Krug wants to go outside. We're on dog watch today, so it's uh, Krug is uh, Krug is in charge. If he uh, if he needs something, better let him go do it.
Right, so if I remember rightly, one of these should be straight to the uh, straight to the spaceport. That's the one. There we go. Ah. Right, it's been putting off going out because it's raining. He doesn't do rain. Uh, giving me a look, telling me off for telling people that he doesn't do rain. It's highly true though. Oh nice, still, still hungover. That indicates that that's a multi-day hangover. Or are you going to tell me that you're surprised when you get a one-day one? Oh, thank you very much, Anna. Yeah, man, I was, I was saying to people earlier, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that much, the, uh, the, birthday, the birthday at Christmas. It's very efficient, that's all I can say. Get all my celebrations out in one go. So, yeah, I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it nowadays. Just makes it a very, very busy time for my wife. It's her I feel sorry for more than anything. There's probably probably some wise cracks in there about having to feel sorry for my wife for more than just the placement of my birthdays, but I'll let you guys make that joke. <laughs> All the alcohol. Yeah, the strange um so usually one of my one of my evenings where I do do go out out is our work Christmas do. But our work Christmas do this year was literally the night before my birthday. And Ali had given me no no clue about what she'd got planned, but she had told me that I would have to be up at eight AM. And I didn't feel like it would therefore be good form to be really hungover for my birthday. So, uh, so this was a this was a new one. This was a Christmas Christmas party with no booze, which was very un-British of me. It must be said. Yeah, it's it's also things, isn't it? Like uh it's like we went went to a restaurant for lunch. It was really nice and everything, but she had to think about that way, way, way in advance. Like I booked I booked a week uh, I booked a week ahead for her birthday, like when it was her her birthday and I had a few restaurants to choose from. First one I called up, yep, no problem, we'll fit you in. When would you like to come? Um but yeah, when she was booking one for mine, I think she had to go through a few different choices and she was trying to line them up like well in advance. So. But as I say, blame my mother. Once again, we're going to daily drive the Vulture because why not? Also, I'm I'm limited in terms of other ships, so it's as good a choice as any on this account. And you know, it's big, shiny, and yellow. And I'm really liking this side entrance as well. Yeah, it might the, the vulture might not be as quick as an MSR, but it doesn't take the best part of a play session to get to the cockpit. If I can find where I'm meant to click. That's a that's a user problem, not a ship problem, I'm willing to admit.
Yeah, so we 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 did a uh, we did a full salvage run earlier, and I would say it's it's not as profitable as quant mining. Um, sort of, I think you're just pinned back by the you know the capacity of the vulture at 12 SCU. I have seen people have because you can free stack the cargo you should be able to like stack up 20 or so um i definitely know somebody in the org managed to get 20 into a into a single load to sell um it's more time consuming in terms of like the actual stripping as opposed to compared to mining the thing which makes it really hard to judge at the moment is i am certain they have turned uh derelicts up to 11 in terms of frequency of spawn you just the moment you hit somewhere with asteroids instantly find the stuff um but yeah it's like it is it is very profitable and i think particularly if you if they bring in some more stuff like mining with sort of more dedicated modules so you know this is all just with a stock vulture so i think if they bring in additional stuff then then you could see the speed increase i think there's a lot of space for um there's a lot of space for the potential for uh multi-crew gameplay i think um but yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be like it's gonna come down to when we actually see what the what the spawn rates are like Right, I gotta warn you guys. I just heard my wife has just got home, so uh, so as I said, unfortunately, we might have to pick this up next time, which will probably just be after Christmas. Um, but I'll probably do another stream in between Christmas and the New Year. And thank you to everybody who's who's come and spent a bit of my birthday with me. Really good fun, just sitting down, playing some SC, having a chat. Um, got to see some of the salvage stuff. So that was really cool. And and yeah, I mean this PTU build's looking good, I've got to say. Um really had to had to force restart a few times during during three hours. Uh and that wasn't the game crashing, that was me having to having to restart because of a bug with MFDs and displays, so I can like there is a bug at the moment where all the MFDs and displays go blank. So it makes it a pain to be able to access anything like elevators and stuff. So a restart at that point was really the only way. But three hours, no crashes. Got straight into a server every time. Um, so yeah, the PTU is is looking really good now. Um, and hopefully, I mean, fingers crossed, I would really love to see it go open before Christmas. But that does mean CIG would have to put it up tonight or tomorrow. Um, so... So yeah, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, but so for those over on Discord, definitely in the coming days gonna be looking at putting together sort of a multi crew expedition for anybody who is able to get into the PCU so we can test out some of the some of the multi crew gameplay elements. I really will test out the reclaimer. Um and and yeah, some of the other stuff like can we shift the cargo into into other ships, that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe get a bit higher up with our bounty hunting and critical threat beacons if we can. Uh, see see what it's like when it comes to sort of salvaging things like hammerheads and um, Idrises. So yeah, all that all that in the coming days. But I would say sorry, I've had to had to cut it short. But we are at three hours, so I don't know that it's that short. But uh, but yeah, we'll have to go and do the uh, Orison platform missions another day. I'm afraid. But yeah, so. Thank you very much. And uh, as ever, there will be links to all of our things like our Discord and stuff down in the video description below. So please feel free to just hop on over and uh, and say hello if you're not there already. Um, and yeah, roll on 318. So uh, so thanks for spending my birthday with me. And I hope you all have a, have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. And I will catch you later. Oh, Jack. Jack accident turns up right as I'm giving my, giving my farewells.
I'm afraid I must. I'm afraid I must. I I, I promised my wife that uh, I would would stream until she got back. But we've uh, we better just pop in and pop up and do some things with her. Right. Happy holidays, everyone.